So in today's lesson, we're going to go and show you how to add the last activity date to an object's detail page. Now this field is native to Salesforce. It's just hidden. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a formula field to kind of unhide that field. There are a few limitations to the field and we'll go over what they are and essentially what that date means. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the cog wheel. We're gonna to go to setup and we wanna create the last activity date on the account object. So we're gonna to go to object manager, account, fields and relationships, and then new. So here we're gonna create that last activity date. It's gonna be a formula field. We're gonna click next, type in last, activity. Uh, so that's our last activity date. We're going to select date. Next. And here we'll want to insert the native Salesforce last activity. So we're going to go to account and then we're going to find last activity. So you can see it's last activity date. It's native to Salesforce. And we're going to add it in there. We're going to click next. What we're going to do is we're going to make it sure it's visible to all users for, for our example. And we want to add it to all of the page layouts and we're going to click save. So we're just going to go into one of our page layouts and we're going to rearrange where it is on the page layout just to make it easier for us for this demonstration's purposes. So we're going to put it up at the top here. And we'll probably remove a few other things just so we don't have them there. We're gonna make this detailed. Uh, so we're gonna click save. And now that last activity date should appear on your page layout. So we're gonna go back to our uh, sales app. And then we're gonna go into one of our accounts that we already have within here. And we're just gonna pick one at random because they should already be there. And now you'll see that this last activity date is present. So there's a few things to note about this last activity. Now, if we were to go and add a new task and here we'll go and just create a call, a due date sometime in the future. Uh, and Let's say we don't know who the contact is at this point. We're just going to leave it blank. And then our status is, let's say we, it's not started because it's in the future. We're going to click save. And then you'll see that the task has been added here. If we were to go and refresh our page, Uh, and now let's, in this example, we're going to go and we're going to create a new task. We'll do a call. We had it in, done in the past. Uh, maybe we do know the contact at this point. Uh, I don't know who the contact is for this. So let's find one. It's Josh Davis. We talked with Josh Davis uh, and it's completed. And we're going to click save. So what it's going to do for tasks is it's going to take the date of when you've last completed your task. So the due date was today. So it's taken the date of today. Uh, because this one is in the future, it won't take that date for tasks only. Events is a different story. But let's say we were to complete this, that it's done. And then we were going to refresh the page. Well, it didn't complete it. We'll just, yes, perfect. It's completed it. We refresh the page. You'll notice that it takes the last activity, so the due date of what we put for May 7. So for the task, it's going to take when you've completed the task. Now for an event, it doesn't necessarily follow the same rules. So let's say we have a meeting scheduled for the 13th from 11 to 12. 
Uh, and we have Josh here again that we'd like as, uh, to attend, and we click Save. So if we were to, now you'll see that the last activity date is the 13th. So when you're looking at this last activity date that's native to Salesforce, there's a few things to look at. So when you're, when you're doing, uh, if you have users using tasks and they're completing tasks, it'll take the date of your last completed task. However, if they're using tasks and events, it'll take the future date of your event. And it, in this scenario, we had one that was completed on this, the task that was completed on the seventh. However, it's overwritten by the event that's happening in the future on the 13th. Now let's take this example a step further. So we've, we've contacted, we've ha we have our meeting with Josh planned, uh, but there's some other attendees on this as well as besides Josh. And maybe they're outside of the organization. Maybe they're not ex at Express Logix Transport. Maybe we also have Andy Young from Dick Dickinson's uh, PLC. So we wanna click Save here. Now, if we were to go to Andy, so let's search for him. Oops, Andy Young. You'll see that we have a meeting with him in the future. However, if we were to go into Dickinson's place, the last activity will be blank. And the reason for this is Salesforce natively takes the related to and rolls up that activity to the related to. So in this meeting, because the related to is express logic in transport, it will natively take this over these two. Uh, so that's one of the limitations. If I have multiple uh, individuals attending my event or I'm doing a task against, and I want th this last activity to roll up to them, it won't because of the related to field. Now, if you were to remove this, uh, it still won't for Andy. It'll do it for the primary, which is Josh, but it won't necessarily for Andy. So if we go into Josh, and then we're going into Express Logic and Transport, you'll still see this for Josh because he was the primary contact. So the first contact that was added to that event. Now, if we were to go to Andy, so if we're gonna to go to Andy and uh, Dickinson's place, it still won't show up there. So that's one limitation to using that native Salesforce last activity field is that it doesn't roll up um, the, the technically the last activity of other individuals at the same event or maybe a task against. It only really rolls up to the related to uh, a place or alternatively the primary contact if you don't have your related to. So that's one limitation of using the last activity field. Now, uh, if you watch my another video that I have on using roll up helper to kind of get you to where you need to see the last activity if you had multiple contacts at an event and uh, definitely click on one of the links above or look at my other videos and i'll walk you through how to do that so that's it for today hopefully you've liked this video so please like and subscribe thank you